So today I wanted to talk about tapping with a clean tone. I know it's a bit more bombastic when you use it with distortion, but I actually really like the textures that come out when you do it clean. I got into it after listening to Tosin Abasi talk about some of the harp-like textures that can come out from holding a chord and then tapping an inversion above it. So that sounds something like... That led to me experimenting with it and getting some results like this. That ended up being a pretty fun way to play. And now for something non-educational. If you like what you see here today, please comment, like, subscribe. It really helps the channel grow, and I really appreciate it. Back to tapping. So the parts don't have to be straight eighth notes like I played before, like... Uh... They can be a bit more interesting rhythmically, or you can hit the chord beforehand. Right? You, they don't need to be just like, I only, I have to hit all these notes so they pull off and create the harp effect. You can kind of create it a few different ways. So it's also a pretty musical way to practice your inversions. I know a lot of people can get kind of burnt out if they're doing something very repetitive that needs to be done repetitively and is very unmusical, something kind of like this. Tapping your way through these inversions can be quite a bit more interesting. So you can also tap two strings, it sounds like this. I think it's pretty cool sounding. The only thing that starts to, you know, become a thing that at least doesn't quite fit in with my taste is the sound of tapping hard, having to tap hard to get a good volume. You know, like that kind of sound really doesn't do it for me. I would never play, you know, just with my left hand like that. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it can kind of sound like because you need to tap a little bit hard to get volume. So there's three remedies to this. The first two are delay and reverb. They're basically the go-tos anytime you want to do something interesting with a clean tone that might be a little bit difficult to pull off. Sometimes they get mistaken for like a talent switch, like, oh, just turn on the delay and reverb and it'll sound good. Be like, yeah, unless you hit an egregious mistake, in which case it'll just be repeated forever. The third is a volume pedal where we just shut the volume off when we do an attack and then swell it right back up so we can get all that volume without the conk, 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 or anything like that. So now that gives us something like this. Pretty neat. So here we have a fun, atypical technique that'll add a surprising sound to really any song you're playing. I think at this point it's almost safe to say that every living thing on earth has a good idea of what regular guitar playing sounds like. And so the challenge of trying to surprise someone and not even actually having a lot of pedals at your disposal is a pretty fun challenge and if you succeed it's pretty rewarding. So it should be said that if you have low output single coils or humbuckers you're going to need a whole lot of compression, which is fine, just let you know that be known. Otherwise, you might want like more modern pickups or maybe a higher output humbucker. I hope you have a bit of fun this week taking out your compression, delay, and reverb pedal, cranking the delay and reverb, and maybe playing your guitar a little bit like a piano and getting some interesting sounds. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next week.